I like this term, the joint compromise map, that we've used it for many, many years. We also use it as a load compromise, because when a joint is injured, you're dealing with load situations that we have to be careful with. That's the same as with hamstring injuries and Achilles tendon injuries. But the joint has been altered. There's a change in the mapping. There's a change in the affrontation. We went through that this morning. We went through it this afternoon. There are changes that take place. And we have to decide, what are we going to do to fight against those negative changes and create positive? Because once it's compromised, it is. Which means, when I said continue to compete strategies, we've got to apply these on a regular basis. They don't go away. For the rest of their athletic career, they don't go away. Because many athletes will stay in the game for a long time. And they keep wearing down the joint, the hip joint, the knee joint, the ankle joint. But they keep playing. And just like this morning's lecture, it looks horrible, but they're happy with a smile when they're running or when they're playing. We know guys that are in the NHL right now that are bone on bone, grade three, four changes. Okay? They should not be on that knee. But they're in the playoffs right now, and they're getting through it. And the knee actually isn't that bad. Reconditioning is a term that I use, not rehabilitation. I work with athletes. I work in a sporting environment. Rehabilitation is what everyone else does. Reconditioning is what an athlete does. I said that last year, and I've evolved a little bit this year to define it this way. It's a performance-based model, reconditioning. That's what we do to get athletes back. It's a performance, not a medical model. Rehab is a medical model. We've worked with a lot of orthopedic surgeons that the protocol is the same protocol that gets given to a world-class athlete that to your mom. Same protocol for the first eight weeks or 12 weeks. It can't be done that way. A medical model doesn't necessarily have its place on a regular basis with elite level athletes. We have to be smarter from a performance perspective. But of course, it's medically supported. It has to be. I'm not saying we don't need the medical people. It is to get an athlete back to competition, a return to competition, not play. Play is like a lesser level of stuff. <coughs> We have to have a performance mind on what they need to look like to get back to competition. Which means some of the things that are asked, these, these athletes are asked to do in the first four weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks, completely underestimates what they're capable of. It doesn't um, um, anticipate what they need to do to get back to competition. It's based off of general population. Reconditioning, restore, improve an athlete's overall physical qualities. That's almost the same definition as rehab. But reconditioning for me, call it athletic development, right? So that term is used a lot now. My colleague, Bert Gambetta, uses that term. He doesn't want to use the term strength and conditioning anymore. He wants to use athletic development. And that's only because you can get them strong and conditioned, but that doesn't necessarily mean you've enhanced performance, all right? Athletic development, develop a better athlete and have them perform better, that's our ultimate goal. We heard it this morning. Training around the injury. This is what I thought of years ago, and today it just got hammered to me again this morning. I was really enlightened this morning's talk, okay? I've always been saying this for years. Don't worry about the hip. The injured body part isn't the problem, right? And many years ago, I called it a brain injury because of just reading the book, The Talent Code, right? A great <coughs> book. If you haven't read it, you should read it. I read it from a, a reconditioning perspective and a strength training perspective. I didn't read it from as a coach's perspective. And that's when I realized, it's like, this has nothing to do. It's just, it's myelin, it's patterning, it's motion and movements. And, and I've done that my entire career because I was too stupid to know otherwise. Because I just went to a ski academy and I started training with, that, with the athletes and I was a trainer and I worked with them. And I had a, a doctor who said, go ahead, kid. Be progressive, do whatever you want to do. You know, don't mess it up, basically. Don't screw up the ligament. But can I do this? Yeah, you can do that. Can I try that? Yeah, you can try that. I was really lucky. That's how we evolve. So the wrong focus in the medical model, too much attention there. Do you need to make it this way right here, right away, and the surgeon needs to see it that way, and the trainer does right away when they get hurt? Of course, you want a diagnosis, you want to get where it is. But then quickly we move away from it and try to correct the whole athlete, not just that. So when you look at planning these processes, what's your approach? Is it a little circle? Is it a big circle in there? Second, get ready for competition. And if you decide it's going to be four months to get to, to go back to competition, then you know somewhere around two and a half to three, the athlete's flying. 
if they don't need to be flying, right, performing really well by three months, meaning they only need four weeks to prepare, then why are preseasons so damn long sometimes? You only need four weeks to get ready. We need more than four weeks to get an injured athlete back because they're detrained, they're going down different pathways, they have to relearn things. We need more time, not less time training them. There's a disruption. Enough said. So based off this morning's doc as well, right, this one has always made sense to me. It's from the talent coach by Blaine Martinez, our uh, uh, grades coach, right? So forth. That's a great quote. So even in a rehab phase, we can slow movements way down, but actually make very, very positive gains of going back down the highway, going back down the right road and so forth, right? And this is the other way I think of mine on a regular basis. If we don't start training good movement patterns as soon as possible, they will have new patterns. And we're in charge of what patterns they're going to have for the most part. 